Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So I'm in the middle of getting my garden beds ready so we can get them planted because I'm feeling a little bit behind but I want to catch up really quickly. And this little trick, what I'm doing today, is going to get your beds prepared really quickly, really ready for you to have an excellent season ahead. It involves starting off with trimming my hedges. So I've been trimming my hedges, we've done all this side, and you might be thinking, why is this guy talking about trimming hedges when we're talking about garden beds preparation? And I'm going to show you that just behind me. So I've got all my hedge trimmings laid out on my lawn. And these, this is going to be my fuel for the garden for the coming season. The first step is to get all this munched up, mixed in with the grass, all the leaves, all the twigs, all the grass, mix it all together and chop it up at the same time. So I'm going to start from this top side. I mean, these grass clippings, these hedge trimmings, everything mixed in together. This is the perfect ratio for a compost pile. I mean, green leaves are ideal just on their own to make a perfect compost pile. What we're going to be doing with this is we're going to be composting in situ because this is going to make an absolutely amazing mulch. So if you haven't got compost, this is your perfect remedy. You don't need to do anything else. This is beautiful. So this is the stuff that I made this bed with last year. And let me get a shovel and I'll show you exactly what it's done. So if I cut into the garden bed, Look how easy the spade just goes in. And this was solid clay before I started. And now, once I get into it, look, you can see that organic matter, rich organic matter, before we get to the gray, murky soil underneath. So you can see that thick organic layer on the top, loads of composting material, and it's all breaking down in place. What I did with this bed at the end of last season was I just covered it in cardboard because it still had crops growing in it quite till quite late on into the season. All I did was cover it with cardboard and leave it. And that's how it was all over winter. So right now the, com the cardboards, you know, we had some weeds coming through. We had some dandelions. Uh, we had some wood havens and stuff coming through. We've taken those out. So I spent the morning taking those out and then trimming the hedges. And now I'm going to get this mulched and we'll hopefully even get it planted today. All the mulching, all the stuff that I've mulched down, it's all on here and I'm just going to spread it out so I've got a nice couple of inches across the top of organic matter. Now this is one of the best ways of building soil. I mean, there's so much. With this kind of material, it'll break down within a season and you'll have loads of ready-made compost right on the surface of your soil, exactly where you want it. And I'm a big fan of mulching and composting in, in situ. I've always been a big fan of um, deep mulches. So this is how I created this bed in the first place last year. You can see my squash. They're the ones that I'm going to plant out today. See, the soil is good enough to grow in. And all we're doing is we're covering that soil. So we keep that soil protected. We don't allow it to oxidize. And then as this breaks down, all this material as it breaks down, it's just gonna go on to feed that soil and turn it into beautiful, lush, fertile, you know, even more than it already is. So this bed is now ready and we're gonna get planting into this. If you had loads of compost, you could do this, you know, with loads of compost. But I don't have access to loads of compost right now. We've, we're almost out of the stuff that we made ourselves and I make a lot of compost myself. I think this is actually even better because this is going to break down in place. You're not going to lose any nutrients in a breaking down process. It's all going to go into feed the soil here. So I've got a few stepping stones that I can use so I don't walk on the beds. I mean, the good thing about these, this kind of deep mulch bed is they don't compact like soil. So you can potentially walk on them like you've seen me walking on it all this time. But if you just want to give it that little bit of a protection, then a few stepping stones don't, don't hurt. So right, I'm going to get planting. And this year, I'm going to plant my sweet corn over here. So 
I'm just going to find where the soil is. And I'm just going to make a small hole where I want to plant into. Mix a bit of chicken manure into that planting hole. If you wanted to, you could add some um, some compost into that planting hole. But right now, the way, I mean, this is fairly new soil still. We grew in it um, the first time last year, so it's not going to need a lot of feeding. I'll just pull that mulch around, but not up to the plant. That's it. And that'll just grow. And with sweet corn, remember, you plant it in blocks and plant it about a trowel's distance for, uh, apart. <clears throat> you can go a little bit closer if you want. See, I'm going to rush to plant at the moment because in a few days I'm not going to be able to plant anymore for a couple... You know, I'm going to have to leave these plants alone for a couple of weeks because I won't be here and there's going to be no one to look after them. So it's a bit of a panic planting this week because we need to get everything into the ground. We had a really good, I mean, the sweet corn was always, it was a nemesis plant for me, but last year and the year before, we've had a couple of good years where we finally started having really good crops. So um, I think I'll finally overcome my nemesis. There we go. You don't have to worry about bringing the mulch right up to the plant because as these plants grow, the weather will naturally bring these, you know, the mulch in and around the plant. The mulch will just naturally fall into place. So don't worry about it. So we're gonna do a slightly different take on the three sisters method. We're gonna get a squash plant into here. I mean, the actual three sisters method, I've not found to be perfectly, you know, uh, it doesn't work exactly how we want it to. Want it to. Um, not with the types of beans that we're growing, not with the climbing beans and the squash and the sweet corn. Simple, one of the reasons I think for us in the UK is because we don't have the season for it. So now I'm just going to get one of these squash plants into here. Oh yes, look at that, just beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, look at that, beautiful roots, and again, a few chicken manure pellets around, soil in, and leave this guy be, It'll grow beautiful in here, because we don't have loads and loads of land, we go for a, a very intense planting method and everything gets planted close together and we still get a decent crop from it. You know, we still get a decent, decent harvest. And as long as we can keep that up, I'm a happy man. Get them planted in. And as the sweet corn grows, they will need earthing up. One thing that you need to do is you, you will need to earth up sweet corn plants. So look at the germination rate difference between, that I've had between the ones that have been singularly sown in a module tray and ones that have been grown in my intense method in an old plastic mushroom tray. Or every seed here has grown and they've all grown into big, healthy, strong plants. Whereas those ones, for some reason, they, look, they just look weak. Now, I don't like those... I've never been a fan of those module trays, but I use them from time to time just so I can see, you know, I can experiment and see what happens. But we'll go with these ones now and we'll get to where we want to be. So you can see the effect of the mulch. Look at that. There's earthworms absolutely everywhere. And these guys will just find their way back into the ground and they'll eat all this stuff that we're giving them. 
this is the, one of the reasons that I garden the way I do is because I just find a way of building all this life and incorporating that into the garden. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get some squash planted into this bed, into this garden, and we're just going to completely fill it because we go for an intense plant planting method. I'm just going to completely fill this garden up with everything that we can. See, I've already got a tomato in back there. And that tomato was in, just sort of test the waters, see how, um, see how things grow, Do you know how how things hand, how it handles the weather outside, and it seems to be doing okay. It seems to be doing okay, as long as the weather holds up, we're going to be all right. Beautiful dark, lush soil, just from adding hedge trimmings, grass clippings, wood chip, absolutely beautiful. You can go and see how I made this bed last year. The whole, the video's there, so you can go and have a look at how I made it. Yeah, let's get the, these planted up. Beautiful. So these are some of my later planted tomatoes. And I'll show you the tomatoes that I planted in February, you know. And I made a video about why I plant tomatoes in February. So these are some of the ones that I planted later on in March and towards the end of March. But they've come on really nice. And this one's a Crimson Crush. So it's supposed to be a blight free variety or a blight resistant variety. There we go, a nice planting hole there. Get this guy in. And away we go. Go root for some crouch grass. <laughs> so what I want is a line of tomatoes planted in ground here. And then I'm going to have some more tomatoes in buckets just behind them. And they're going to be the older varieties or the older, you know, ones that, that I've grown. And the reason that I want them in buckets, especially where I am, is so I can get in behind, I can move the buckets and it just makes it easier to trim the hedges. And this place here, where I'm digging now, this is where I had my sweet corn planted last year. We had a really good harvest actually. From being my nemesis plant, it's actually gone into a plant that I really enjoy growing. So these are the tomatoes that I planted in February and you can see them, do you know, they're flowering on a couple of the plants I've actually got fruit set. So they're coming on really strong. And this one I've, I've grown it into a, a double leader. So it's got two leaders. It'll take some of the vigor out of it. And they're perfect for just plant, putting in behind, you know, as a row behind where I'm actually planting in ground. And then I'll have two rows of tomatoes, one in ground, one out, you know, in buckets. So this is what I was talking about. So we've actually got some fruits out there as well. So that's why I go for early plantings of tomatoes. So it just makes sure that I get a decent crop before blight season comes in. Get rid of these suckers. We've done a number of jobs in one day. We've trimmed the hedges. We've cut the grass. We've created a mulch to, we've created a mulch to bed. Um, we've got the bed planted as well so loads of things ticked off in one day don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for regular updates and if you like what you see and want to support our channel we also make videos on patreon so that's a, a way of supporting our channel i'll leave it there for this one assalamu alaikum warahmatullah